welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today I am so excited to be introducing our brand new dye Spooky Forest Backdrop. This backdrop is so beautiful and it is perfect for Halloween cards, ones just like this. But the other really cool thing about it is that it's also perfect for winter cards. And in this video we're going to be focused more on Halloween, but in September's Inspiration Week we will focus on some winter cards with it, so make sure to stay tuned for that. We're also going to be introducing our new spooky gate die, which is so cool and I love that it can be used on its own or with the spooky force backdrop and we're going to be showing you both of those things today. First up, we're going to take a look at the spooky forest backdrop. And as you can see, it contains the backdrop that kind of can frame your whole scene and then all of these extra little elements that you can add into your scene. Of course, we have the backdrop and we also have these tombstones. We have some cute little grasses that you could add into your scene and some little rocks as well that are perfect for setting the scene too. We have this adorable little owl and we'll see how to put that together in just a second. And then this really cute ghost. And then of course we have our adorable moon too. First up, we're gonna work on the owl. And the owl has three pieces and this is the base piece and you'll see it has those embossed sections for the eyes. We're gonna add a little drop of glue in each one and then there's the little circle die that comes in this set to die cut the eyes for the owl. Then you can take the main owl body and just layer that over top. And what that gives you is you have the different colored wings and then also the different colored eyes for a super cute little owl like this. He is just adorable. Then we have something similar for the ghost. So we have the main ghost body there and then you can layer it over this little teardrop shape piece and that's gonna give you the color for the eyes and the mouth in the ghost. And here you can see how you can layer and mix and match these pieces to add elements into your spooky forest backdrop scene. You could also use these elements on other cards too. Here is the spooky gate. So we have the two gates. We also have this post for the lamp, the lamp and then a little decorative piece for the post. And so to put these pieces together, you can take this little decorative piece and it's gonna layer right there in between those embossed lines. And then you can put some tape behind your lamp post and then layer a little piece of yellow cardstock behind for it to be the lamp. Then you can layer the gate behind the post, which looks so cool. Then to complete this look, you can add another lamp post on the other side. You can also layer this with some of our fence border dies and Shari's gonna be showing you that in just a little bit. But this is just such a cool spooky fence. And the other thing that I love about it is that it was sized to work with the spooky forest backdrop. So you can also use these little gate images for this spooky forest backdrop scene. So now it's time to create a card with this and we are recreating a card by Elena and she used such unique colors and then after this Shari is going to use more traditional Halloween colors for two different cards that are so beautiful. Here we have some peacock cardstock and we're using some black soot distress oxide ink to go around the edges. And I love that just by inking the edges a little bit it looks like you have an entirely ink blended background that has this kind of cool spooky feel. To give it a little more texture, we're gonna add some splatter. So we're gonna smear some of that ink on the craft mat, add a little bit of water, and then we can pick that up with a paintbrush and tap the paintbrush to create cool little splatters all over this card. And you can see as these splatters start to form, it adds even more texture and more of a kind of spooky feel to this card. Next, we're gonna take this spooky forest backdrop and we're gonna die cut it from some paper bag cardstock. And then we're gonna use some Gathered Twigs Distress Ink to add a little bit of ink detail to this piece as well. Once again, going along with this theme of starting with a different color of cardstock and adding just a little bit of ink to the edges to give it just a bit of dimension. Now we're gonna start working on some kind of grassy hills for the background here. So we're gonna be using some different border dies. So here is the original Stitch Till side borders and we're gonna die cut some of this beautiful green textured cardstock. And then we're also going to be using a less dramatic hillside here, one of our simple hillsides to kind of layer with the bumpy one to get a bunch of different texture. Then we're actually gonna use the Spooky Forest backdrop again. We're gonna die cut it from this green textured cardstock as well, but we're gonna end up actually only using the bottom part and that's gonna be another part of our hills in the background. And just like we did with all of our other cardstock pieces, we're gonna add some inking to this as well. So we're gonna take out some Mode Lawn Distress Ink here and we're gonna ink up the edges. And once again, giving this really cool kind of ink blended look just by starting off with a color of cardstock and then picking an ink color that's just a little bit darker just to add a little bit of texture. And I think this looks so pretty. 
Now you'll notice that all of these grassy hills are pretty tall. That's because we weren't quite sure how tall they needed to be. So I always like to do a little bit of extra. Then I can layer it behind my spooky forest backdrop and make a little pencil mark once I have that perfect height. And then we can trim it off later. Now I love using this other part of the spooky forest backdrop to create extra texture on the card. It's really fun. And so once again, we're making some nice little tick marks to let us know where to go. Then last but not least, we're gonna use our simple hillside, layer the backdrop over top again, and make another pencil mark. And then we can go ahead and trim all of these pieces down so that they're the perfect height. And then for the spooky forest backdrop piece, we're actually just gonna take our scissors and trim it because it's just a little part of the backdrop there that we just need to trim off. And we can save those trees there to use on another card, which is really great. Now it's time to start layering all these pieces. And I just love this like turquoise combo with the grass. I just think it's so pretty. Oh my goodness. So now we're gonna layer that on there. We're gonna layer the little grassy pieces from the spooky forest backdrop. And then we'll take our simple hillside there and that's gonna cover any of that kind of stitch detail at the bottom. And then to give this more of a shadow box feel, we're gonna add some foam tape and foam squares to the back of the spooky forest backdrop. And you can see by adding the foam there, it just gives it such a cool dimensional look. Now for the scene, it would be super cute to add some stamped images, but there's all these cool die cut elements. So we thought it'd be fun to create a mostly die cut card. So we're gonna use the elements from the spooky forest backdrop and then also the spooky gate that has the lamp post in it too. And we've gone ahead and die cut a bunch of these elements from some fog card sock, which is a really nice light gray. And we're gonna do a combination of pumice stone and hickory smoke and layer it over these pieces to give that kind of distressed Halloween-y feel to them. And I love adding inking like this to die cuts because it kind of brings them to life. And especially something like this where you want it to look kind of spooky, like the gate's kind of dirty or old. You can just ink the edges. There's no right or wrong. And it's just going to look amazing. And I love that the little stitch details and everything really pop with the inking over them. So now we need to layer some of these pieces. So we're gonna layer that little decorative edge on the top of the lamp post. And you can see those ones we added with a little bit of darker inking so that they really pop on the posts. And then for the tombstones, we're actually gonna use some of these pumpkin faces from Pick of the Patch. And they look really cool on these tombstones. So we're gonna go ahead and stamp these on there. You could also leave them blank or find other images for them. But I thought this was a really cool look, almost like they're kind of like jack-o'-lanterns. Now we're gonna to start to put together some of those other die cut elements. So we have some ghosts, the owl, the moon, and also the lamps. And we need to layer these pieces together. So we're gonna add the little drops of glue and then layer on the owl's eyes there. And then we can layer his main body over top. And this little owl is so cute. He's one of my son's favorite. He loves to play with this little owl. And then we can layer those little yellow kind of rectangle type pieces behind the lamp posts to fill in the light from the posts. Um, and you could do this with maybe even some vellum behind it too. I think that would be really, really pretty. So now we can start to add the elements into our spooky forest backdrop scene. So we're going to layer the gate behind the lamp post and then we're going to layer that over top of this spooky forest. I love that you can also layer the gate images kind of behind the trees too. And that's a really cool look. And then of course we'll do the other side so that they both match. And I just love all the dimension and we can add the little lamps over top. And then we can add the tombstones there in the background. And for two of them, we're gonna add some foam squares just for a little bit of dimension. And we can kind of tuck those behind the gate, which I think looks really nice. Next, we're gonna add some rocks there around the lamp posts, once again, to help set the scene. And then for the ghosts, we're gonna be using some pearlescent vellum because these give the ghost such a cool look. We're also gonna be layering in some of these other elements. So the moon there, and then we're gonna add all of these little ghosts kind of floating around. And my favorite one is the one that's kind of floating around the moon. I think that's so cute. And I love that he's kind of going upside down there. And then last but not least, we're gonna add our adorable little owl. Now here is a standard size card base that's five and a half by four and a quarter. We're gonna layer our whole panel on top. And then to finish this card up, we're actually gonna put the Happy Halloween sentiment on the inside of the card. And so we're gonna be using a Happy Halloween from that same pick of the patch stamp set since we had it right on our desk right there. And we're gonna stamp that on the inside. So you don't always have to put a sentiment on the outside of the card if it doesn't quite fit your scene. You could also stamp it on the inside, which I think is a really, really fun look too. And now the card is all done. And I love the unique color scheme for a Halloween card. And then the fact that it's almost a completely die cut card. I think it looks so cool. And next up, Shari is gonna show us how to add stamped elements into your spooky forest backdrop. So take it away, Shari. 
To create my spooky forest card today, I have gone ahead and cut the spooky forest backdrop die from some black cardstock. I also have a piece of Bristol smooth cardstock cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. And this is what I'll be doing ink blending on to create a spooky sky that layers behind these spooky trees. So I have my nighttime sky stencil here and you can see I'm lining up the moon. But actually what I'm going to do first, and you'll see me kind of change here in just a second, is I'm going to use the mask of the moon first versus the moon itself. So I'm just putting a little bit of removable adhesive straight onto the stencil. I'll put this in my circle since I already have the moon lined up where I wanted it to be. And I'll just take away the other part of the stencil. So I've just masked off where that moon will be and I can start by inking the sky. I've pulled out some purples to use and I'm starting with milled lavender distress oxide for the really light purple glow around the moon. I'll be starting on that mask and kind of pulling the ink off to the sides to create that really pale purple glow. Then I can start to pull in those darker purples. This is wilted violet distress oxide. And then you'll see I'll go back and forth between the two colors, blending them together so I don't have a harsh line, and they blend together nicely. I am using Wilted Violet over most of the sky, and then to darken it up and make it look like nighttime, I'll pull in some Villainous Potion Distress Oxide. This is a deep, dark purple, and it really gives it that nighttime look. And you can see as I add in that darker color, that moon area really looks like it's glowing with that light purple. I keep going back to that light purple to make sure I don't lose that glow around the moon. And I think that this is looking really nice. Just making sure everything is nice and smoothed out. Now that my base color is in place, I can start to add some texture. And I'll be doing this by adding some droplets of clean water, which I'm doing here, and picking it up with a paper towel. That will take away some of that ink and create some lighter spots. And then I'll also add in some white metallic shimmer and some black watercolor specks. I did get some really big blobs down there at the bottom, but I just went back over with my ink to kind of soften those light spots a little bit. Here's that white metallic, and I'm making sure those are very small splatters, so it's just kind of a very subtle shimmer in the background. And then here is that black watercolor. And what I like to do with this is put it onto a block and flick it off so I get really small black dots. You can kind of see it on that moon mask there, but once I pull that away, my moon is perfectly nice and clean. Now I've made sure that the splatters are all dry before I place the stencil back on, and I'm going to protect the sides so I make sure I don't get any ink where I don't want it. Now for the moon, I'm using a combination of antique linen and squeezed lemonade distress oxide. As you can see, I started out there with a little too much ink on my blending tool, so I'm just tapping off the extra on that scrap sheet so that the colors are very, very light and you keep that bright, glowing look of that moon. Now for the little dot details of the moon, I'm going to mask off my stencil again, and I added some more of that squeeze lemonade, but it wasn't quite dark enough, so I just grabbed the blending tool for Wild Honey and just used what ink was on there to add some really subtle spot details to the moon. Now I'm adding some liquid glue all over the back of this spooky forest backdrop, and I'll just glue this directly to that inked background that I created. And I really love how this pulls the scene together with that glowing moon in the background and that dark purple sky. I just think it looks so cool. Now for my characters on my card, I am going to be using some bats from Fantastic Friends. This cute little wolf from the wolf before and afters, I love that he's howling. And then I'm using that big rock that is in the Wild Wolves stamp set. So I've already colored all these images and cut them out with the coordinating dies. For my sentiment, I'm using the Simply Fall Sentiment stamp set with the Happy Halloween. And I don't have my images glued down yet, I just had them there for placement. I've put that Happy Halloween 
in my misty and picked it up with the door. And now I'm pulling up the ends and then bending them down to create an arched sentiment. So I'm keeping that center of the sentiment right where it was and just pulling the two sides down and making sure they're even. The grid on the misty door really helps make sure that it's nice and even and centered. And then I will just stamp this directly onto that inked background. And because I used oxide inks that are kind of chalky because they're pigment inks, I am making sure I stamp this in some black VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And that will show up nicely on that inked background. I'm going to go ahead and put this onto a card base so that I don't forget before I have all my little critters popped up on there. And then I'll add my little wolf to his big rock that he's howling on top of. And for all my images, I will pop these up with some foam squares so that I have some dimension on the front of this card. So I've put some foam squares all over the back of the wolf and the rock. And I'm just centering that up in the bottom so it looks like it's sitting on that black part at the bottom of that spooky backdrop. Then for my little bats, I'm adding some foam squares to them and they're going to be hanging up in the branches of the trees. And I like that they're overlapping the moon a little bit and kind of framing up the sentiment nicely. I really love this guy hanging upside down with his wings out. I just think he's so much fun. Then I wanted to add a little more sparkle and I thought I'd do something a little different. I pulled out the stars from the Hearts and Stars skinny tag die and I cut these from some purple glitter cardstock. So instead of the normal gold, I thought that this purple would be really fun. It's a little more subtle. It doesn't stand out quite as much and keeps the moon kind of the bright focal point, but it still adds a little interest and shimmer around my images. And I used the smallest and the medium sized stars in that die set. I did not use the largest. And then of course I'm adding my stardust stickles just a little bit to the wings of the bat and also the rock that the wolf is sitting on. And then here is my finished card. I really love that inked background with that bright moon. The spooky backdrop really frames it up nicely. And I love that sentiment over the wolf. It kind of looks like he's howling the sentiment at the moon. For my card today, I'm using the Spooky Gate, but I'm going to pair it with the Spooky Fence Border Die. I've cut out my gate and my fence from black cardstock, my lanterns from some black glitter cardstock, and you can see I have the little pieces that layer behind. Those are cut from some sunflower cardstock. And I'm just taking my little lantern pieces and flipping them over so we're looking at the back side adding a few dots of glue and then I'm just going to pick up that piece of yellow that I've die cut and layer it behind the lantern. Now for the pillars of the gate, I'm going to cut these from some gray cardstock and I'm using the new textured canvas gray cardstock pack. This has three shades of gray as well as a white and a black and I'm going to pick this sort of middle shade of gray. And I cut the pillars as well as the caps from the same gray, but I wanted to darken up the pillars a little bit with some hickory smoke distress ink. And you can see when I do this, it really makes those fun stitching details of the stones or bricks kind of stand out. And so now these are a little bit darker and my cap, which is cut from the same cardstock, is a little bit lighter and it will show up nicely. And I'm just adding a little bit more darkness to the top so I have a little more contrast. The other thing I did was I went in with a Copic marker and added some details. So you'll see me do that here in just a moment. I'm adding my little cap with some liquid glue just to the top of each of these pillars. And then so it didn't look quite so uniform, here I am with my Copic marker, just adding some little flicks of dark gray to those bricks or those stones. And this just makes it look a little less like one color and we have some differences in color and add some texture. Now I'm going to go ahead and add those lanterns to the tops as well. And I'm just adding some liquid glue to the base. I'm gonna layer this behind the tops of these pillars. 
Now I have a piece of Bristol cardstock cut with the largest of the outside in stitch rectangles and I've pulled out the full moon die and I'm going to be cutting my moon from this white piece of cardstock and then I'll be ink blending the moon and the sky separately. So I've just centered this up in this rectangle and I've die cut that out and what I like about this die is it gives you that really fun stitching detail around the outside of that circle as well which I think is fun. Now I'm going to ink my moon first so I've just put some removable adhesive on the back of that piece and put it on my make art station. You could put it on whatever surface you ink blend on and I'm pulling out squeeze lemonade a little bit of antique linen because I think it knocks down the brightness of the yellow a little bit. And then I'll also pull in a little bit of wild honey to darken up one of the sides so that this isn't all one kind of color. It has some dimension and some shading on one side. Now this die does cut out some marks to create some spots on the moon. They're a little hard to see here on camera, especially with these light colors, but I'm also going to use the stencil and create some dark spots as well. Now for the sky, I'm using the same medium mat. I've just stuck it down with some removable adhesive. And I'm starting in the center with Salvage Patina Distress Oxide to create my light color around the moon so it looks like it glows. Then I'm pulling in peacock feathers towards the center, trying to make sure I don't go all the way to that die cut. I still want some of that lighter color around the outside. And I'll just go back and forth between my blending tools so I don't have a harsh line. And then for the dark parts, I'm pulling in some Uncharted Mariner, which I just think is such a pretty color for a night sky. It's kind of teal and blue and dark and moody, and I just think it's perfect. So I've done that around the outside edges, and once I have that looking how I want, I'm going to add some black splatters just to the sky. You can see I checked the moon, but I took it away. And then I'll set that aside to dry. Now I can move on to some of the pieces in the foreground. I want these trees behind my fence and my gate. I cut them from some sugar plum cardstock. This is the simple stitch tree border. I'm just not using the parts that layer behind the trees. And then I have a piece of storm cloud cardstock, which is that dark gray, cut with the largest stitch rectangle, and I'm layering my ink blended piece over it. This is going to give me that dark gray border around all the sides. Then I can drop my moon into that negative opening that I cut out with the die. And then I wanted to make this gate functional. <laughs> I wanted to make it to where the gate could be opened and you could have a surprise behind it. So I'm going to use the black texture canvas cardstock because it's not quite as thick so it will bend a little easier. And I'm just doing some measuring here. So that gate is about an eighth of an inch wide on the edge. And then I can add a little bit that goes behind the pillar. So you're gonna see here in a minute what I mean. So I just cut a strip of that textured canvas cardstock to one half of an inch. And then I'm cutting two lengths that are seven eighths of an inch. I just measured how tall that shortest part of the gate was. Then I will take each of these little pieces and score them at one eighth of an inch. So that little piece that's to the right of my score line, that's gonna go on the gate, and to the left is going to go on the pillar. You'll see here in just a minute. I'm gonna fold these on that score line, and then take my bone folder and make sure the crease is nice and crisp. So I'll take the little part of this hinge, the smaller part on the fold, that will layer behind the short side of my gate. So I've turned them all in the direction they need to go and you'll see how this is going to come together. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of liquid glue on that short side and add it layered behind the gate. And because it's only an eighth of an inch, it's not going to show through the openings of the gate. I'll do the same to the other side. And 
and I, mine was just slightly tall. I'm just trimming it down so that it looks like it's seamless. You can see how we have that little hinge there now. And I can add liquid glue to the larger part and that just layers behind the stone pillars that we created. And now we have a functional gate. I just think this is a really fun way to use this gate a little bit differently than just having it flat. And now let's add our spooky fence. So I'm just gonna cut it right in half because obviously I don't need all this length. And then I'm going to take one of those fence posts that's vertical and use that as my surface to glue behind my pillar. And it's at this point, once I got it kind of glued together like this, that I realized this would be really cool on a slimline card. So I'm just going to pull a piece of paper here to show you how that would fit on a slimline. I'm definitely going to have to do this in the future and make a slimline with this really cool gate idea. So back to the card that we're creating now, I am ready to add my gate and my fence to my trees. So I'm just adding a little bit of liquid glue, obviously not on the gate part because we want that to swing. And I'm just using my grid mat to make sure that I have that gate at the center line of this piece with the trees. Then I will do the same thing to the other side, just a little bit of liquid glue. Just as a side note, I did not need that glue up on the lantern. It's obviously above the trees and you're gonna see me wipe that off here in just a little bit. And then I'll just butt that one up to the other gate. Here I am wiping off the glue. And then I can just trim off the excess fence that goes off each side. Look how fun this is going to look. Let me add that background piece to a card base before I start adding everything else because I am going to pop some things up with foam. And I'm adding some foam tape all over the back of that purple tree piece so I can pop up this whole assembly with the gate and the fence and the trees so that it has some dimension from that moon background. Now I wanted to see a little pumpkin through the gate and this is an older set. This is spooktacular, but it is one of my favorite sets. I love the fonts and the sentiments and the little images. So I colored and cut out the little pumpkin from that set. I fussy cut him so that he did not have any white around him. And then I'm using the sentiment, you are spooktacular. It fits perfectly inside the moon. I am stamping this with VersaFine ink since that moon is ink blended with some oxide ink. And then I'm going to add my little pumpkin so that he's hiding behind the gate and you see him when you open it. And I just think that is really fun. You could also use one of the stitch pumpkins, but I thought that this was a really fun jack-o'-lantern. And then for some more glitz and glitter, I have some little bats cut from some black glitter cardstock. Now these bats come from a couple different die sets. The small one comes from the Halloween add-on to the build house, and then the larger one comes from the haunted house add-on for the scallop treat box. But you could also stamp some bats. I think that would be fun. There's lots of bat options in your supplies, I'm sure. But this just kind of helped fill the sky a little bit and finish off this little scene nicely because it is very heavy at the bottom. So it needed a little bit more up in that beautiful night sky and framing up that beautiful moon. And then here is my finished card. I think it's so much fun with that gate that opens where you can see that jack-o'-lantern. But I think that this would be a really cool card with a gate that is laying flat without the jack-o'-lantern as well because that moon is so cool. Oh my goodness, Shari. I love these cards so much. I love that that gate can open up and I think the gate is so cool on its own. And then I love how you combined both fantastic friends with the brand new Wolf Before and Afters in your spooky forest backdrop scene. And next up we have some incredible cards by the design team. And this one by Yanea is so cool because she created a window card. There's acetate behind that spooky forest backdrop. And as you open it up, you can see the rest of her scene on the inside of the card. And I think this is just gorgeous. This card here by Megan is amazing. I love how she added our awesome spooky village in the background of her spooky forest backdrop scene. 
I love that this die set is not just for Halloween. It's also perfect for winter, especially when it's cut out of white or glittery cardstock. And then this card by Tammy is just stunning. I mean, that background is just amazing. That moon really glows. Here, Callie shows us that these are the perfect winter trees for her snowmen too. And I think this is just such a sweet card. And then Audrey's card is just amazing. I love the howling wolf and the awesome spooky gate that she added to her spooky forest. And then this is the card by Elena that inspired us to make ours. And it is so gorgeous. I love it so much. And oh my goodness, I cannot wait to see all of your spooky cards. So make sure to share them with us. Thank you so much for watching today. And I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.